Hi doll people and welcome to a doll talk or a doll ramble or whatever you want this video to be. I haven't been posting very often because I've been working as I'm sure all medical professionals are. But I haven't really had any chance to like check in with you guys and like just have a good old just ramble. First off, I want to mention that I have had some dolls come in. Oh, I know, I know that's bad, right? We're supposed to be, we're supposed to be saving. We're supposed to be keeping our head down, maybe not splurging so much, just in case, you know, with all the uncertainties that we're being presented with because of the pandemic. But I may have purchased a doll she Erica Snow. It's the Fashion Maxi, which is their MSD version. There's there's a classic Maxi, which I believe is the 60 or SD version. And then the one that I have is the MSD version. And I did a little box opening for her. After I opened her up and played with her for a little bit, and I I enjoyed the sculpt. Hated the face up. Didn't like the face up. I got this grand idea that I might take one of my YoSD heads that were floating and put it on the body. YoSD on an MSD body, yeah, but it's from you doll, and that head is definitely mini fee size, so it could work. So I popped it on that body and cre and created the best situation for myself. And there she is. Yes, so this is Aiko, and she is a Mew Doll Delia head on a Dolce Fashion Maxi body. And I'm actually really happy with her existence. <laughs> yes, really happy with her existence. She's fantastic. I think my favorite part about the mix is that the body gives me a really nice young woman mature kind of a feel but her face is giving me young and sweet and i think the, the two mix together like uh savory and sweet if you will so yeah she's kind of like she's my sweet little young girl and i love that in msd form it it helps me to be honest yeah if i'm honest it just helps me because Doll she Erica. Erica was fine. She hated most of the people she was on the shelf with. The body makes me want to create things that are more, not necessarily edgy, but things that you probably be able to pick up in a Victoria's Secret. Like not necessarily lingerie, but bustiers and like really cute um, tops, crop tops and stuff like that. The body makes me want to do that, but Erica herself 
the sculpt. Hold up. I, I'm still cleaning her, but this sculpt, very pretty sculpt. I actually really like this sculpt. But this sculpt makes me want to do really dramatic fashion forward pieces, which I still might do because I still intend on painting that face and then maybe photographing her on the body still. You know, so that's that still might happen. Maybe not as soon as Aiko here, but that still might happen. I got another doll in and I, I've i kind of actually been freaking the fuck out about it because he is right, right there. I'm gonna pick him up, but here's his box opening. This dashing young man is Virgil. Virgil is, or I guess I could say he was more of a grail. Virgil's probably more of a grail for me. Um, and a good friend, Beck, she, she sent him to me prematurely, I guess you could say. Um, I'd planned to just flat out purchase him a little bit before things got really real with the pandemic. Um, I'd planned to just go in, make his purchase because she gave me a really good price for him. And then that would have been it. But my husband got laid off and life got real. And all of my monies had to go, of course, to adulting. So that meant I had to do a layaway, which she was fine with. She was totally fine with doing a layaway with him and everything. She was always okay with that. I just wanted to do one, you know, one quick purchase. It's easier, it's easier. You know, I hate owing people, you know, that whole thing. So I wanted to purchase him outright and just be done. I didn't really want to do a layaway, but she allowed it. Um, this is Virgil, and Virgil is, <laughs> he's a Zoom Super Gem Dia in tan skin, and I believe this is the company face up. This is not a face up that I did. He's so handsome, look at him. Oh God, he's so fucking gorgeous. Oh, and he's so big, he's so big. Um, he's super cuddly, actually. When I mentioned that he was sent prematurely what I'm what I mean is that um, I'm still paying on him but she trusted me enough that she sent him to me and trusted me enough that I'll, I'll pay her which is such a huge compliment to me I mean I've I've always intended to pay and I've always intended to be fair but for her to go that extra mile to say hey I know you're going through things right now with this pandemic and work, because it hasn't been easy. She wanted to extend him to me sooner 
to kind of take my mind off of everything. And that means so much to me. Just because he really has been a very welcomed distraction after work. After I come in, I have a whole night ritual. I work the evenings. So when I come in, yes, of course I'm tired, but I strip at my front door. And I come in the house naked and I wash up immediately. And that feels really sterile and weird. And it's not what I want home to feel like. But I've been doing that ritual for weeks because I cannot bring the virus home to my husband. I cannot do that. Um, so that that was, that's what I'm doing. I strip at my front door. All of my laundry is separate. All of my work laundry is separate from our actual laundry. They will not mix. I have to take these precautions, but it, it doesn't make home feel home -y. It feels sterile, it feels like work, and it's just a fucking bummer if I'm honest. Um, but that's what I'd been doing. And up until he came home, I'm a part of a Corona and Craft group, that's the name of the group. And what we do is we have challenges. We have sewing challenges and crocheting challenges and stuff like that, where there's really no allotted time in which you can take to work on a project, but they'll throw out something that we're all gonna do and we all interpret it the way we wanna interpret it. And that's been keeping my mind off things. It's been helping me. Cause even when I'm at work and stuff, I'll think, oh, I could do this with, the challenge like one of my favorite challenges was actually the corset challenge which I'll show you my corset in just a bit but beyond that beyond that it was great because even my husband has been like stir crazy so having him come in so soon because I expected to have him come in sometime in the middle of next month with how my layaway option was gonna be going but having him come in sooner and having him be absolutely everything I expected out of this sculpt, out of this doll for years has been such a welcomed experience. And I'm still getting to know him. I'm still getting to know this body. I love this body. I actually really love this body. Um, I need to, I need to, hot glue suede him and finish wiring him. I've wired his arms and stuff so he can hold his poses and everything because that's important. But I need to finish suading him. I ran out of glue sticks. Um, but I love this body. I love sewing for this body. I've been sewing up a storm. This is actually not his wig. He does want he wants this wig. He really does but so does Aya. Like Aya and him will kill each other if I don't figure some shit out. Cause they both look good in their, in this wig. And this is a wig from the Dollitarium. Um, she sent this wig to me and I love this. I love big messy hair. Love it. I fucking love it. So yeah, and he looks really good in this. Um, but I've been sewing for him. I made this vest. Hold on, let me straighten it out. Come on, Virgil, show everybody your vest. So I made this really nice vest for him. Love this lace. This is some best friend lace. Thank you, Summer. Yeah, look at that paisley. I love a good paisley, like any day. And then this shirt I actually got from a random kind of like giveaway situation at a DOA meet that I was going to years ago. Um, I made these harem pants. I still need to put buttons in the back. I made these harem pants last night after coming in from work. So, some nice pleated harem pants. I need to photograph them. They look like shit in this, in this video. Um, and then he wears SD13 shoes. This is also a gift from my friend Teresa, who goes to my local New York City 
doll meets that I usually host monthly, but the apocalypse is the apocalypse is happening right now, so we can't fucking do it. So there's that. I love this doll. I really do. And I think now more than ever, I really appreciate all of my friends, all of the beautiful people that have been so nice to me, all of my doll people. You guys actually don't know how sweet you guys are to me. And sometimes it can be overwhelming, but in such a good way. It's not overwhelming like I can't handle it. It's overwhelming like people give a fuck and it's blowing my mind. <laughs> I miss my local people so much. Please check on your extroverted friends. We are not fucking okay. The social distancing thing, it's essential and it needs to be done. I'm aware, but that doesn't mean it feels good. I need to socialize. Just like introverts need to not be around people, I need to be around people and it's, I'm not gonna lie, it's fucking with me. It is, it's not, doesn't feel good to be so isolated. It doesn't feel, feel good to not be able to go see people and be around people and date night with my husband. And I didn't realize how much of a privilege it was to just, enjoy being in a group of people until this. I've never had this happen to me where I couldn't do anything, really. Um, and for those of you that know me personally, you've been around me, you know how much I love being around people, you know how much I love talking, and you know how much I enjoy people. I really do, and right now I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not being allowed to do that, especially considering I'm exposing myself to COVID-19 daily. I work with COVID patients daily. So it would, it would be irresponsible for me to go against the social distancing and just go hang out with a bunch of people anyway. It's not easy. It's not easy for me. Working hasn't been easy for me, but this doll has made it so. And he's only been here, I believe this week, Tuesday. So tomorrow, tomorrow he will have been here just a week. Just a week. He's still baby, he's still a baby. Oh, I love him so much. This wig, okay. I'm gonna take his wig off so you guys can actually get a, a good look at his luscious face. But he is gorgeous. Look, look at that face up. Like, Sue knew what they was doing. Look at those teeth. Yes, honey. He's gorgeous. He's so, so gorgeous. Oh, he's so gorgeous. Backstory. I've wanted a Sue Dia since 2008. The very first time I seen a Sue Dia, I didn't know what he was. And I was kind of like, I was getting introduced to the company Dalshi back then. Um, and funny enough, lots of people that own Dalshi also own Zoom. But I didn't know what he was. I just figured he was just another really beautiful Dalshi sculpt. So for, like, I want to say maybe six months or so, I thought he was Dalshi. But then I got introduced to the Tiny Gems. Um, and that's what Zoom calls their USD dolls, USD sized dolls. After finding the tiny gems and wanting one super bad, like I got into doll sheet and I thought they were beautiful, but I knew it was something that I couldn't handle at the time. Like my sewing skills were, weren't really up to it. My face up skills certainly weren't up to it. My money was not up to it. So it wasn't something that I was like lusting after because I knew I wasn't ready. But these tiny gems were adorable. And I could work with adorable. And I wanted one so bad. So I remember going on the site, just trying to find one. And they're like, if you know Zoom, you know they're perpetually and habitually out of stock all the time. <laughs> so 
that was frustrating. But going through their site and looking at all of the different sculpts, trying to find one that might be in stock, I found the Dia sculpt. And back then, the Dia sculpt was released as a female. And I was like, oh, it's a girl. But it looks real good as a boy, like a like real good as a boy. And I've always favored the, the Dia boys more than the head being on a female body. I like both, but I favor this situation. Cause I mean, look at him. He's so handsome. Um, so after, after seeing him, or her, after seeing her and being exposed to the Dia sculpt as a girl, I went down a rabbit hole on Flickr. But as I continued searching the Dia sculpt, every single one was gorgeous. Like, you guys know what I'm talking about in the BJD hobby. You see, like, you know what, for instance, uh, you know Eleusis. There'll be like 19 people that have them. You'll probably like 10 of them. And the rest of them are just good. But with the Dia sculpt, I was attracted and just blown away by how gorgeous every single one was. And that's rare for me. So that's when I knew, okay, fuck the tiny gem. I need a Dia. Couldn't get a Dia. Dias are expensive. <laughs> They're super expensive. And there was a long, long time where I couldn't even, I couldn't even, it wasn't that I couldn't justify it. I could definitely justify it. It was just that it wasn't happening. I ain't had the money. Um, and then after becoming like an official adult, because I started in the BJD hobby when I was still a late teenager, but actually being an adult with a career and having money, I was like, okay, I can get me a Dia. But I've always wanted him in tan. And I've always wanted, I've always wanted him to come as a full doll. So there were times where I would see his sculpt in tan, but it was just the head or it was just the body. Or there was one time that got really close where it was a tan Dia and everything, but that transaction turned out to be whack because the seller was untruthful with me and I didn't feel comfortable giving them my money after that. But, so that fell through. And then there were times where I seen the full doll, but he was in normal skin. And that's fine, but you know, when you have your mind set on something, the normal skin won't work because you have a whole idea jammed in your head, you know? So, and then I did, there was one other time I seen a tan Dia with a blank face selling for a real good price, but I was broke. I had just come from a, a convention. You know, when you leave a con, you'd be hella broke. You just got just enough money to like get a taxi to go home, if that, you know? So I was like so broke and he sold immediately. So I missed out on that. So all these years I've been looking for a Dia, looking for a Dia. And I remember I held uh, the slumber party with me, Summer, Libby and Amy. And Amy brought her Dia boy. And oh my God. Up until meeting, up until meeting Amy's Dia, I'd never held a Dia in person. I'd seen one in person, but I'd never held one in person. And I got to know her guy and how big he was and just seeing the features of the Dia sculpt in person. I was like, I need this shit in my life. I need it. And I, I, I it just didn't happen up until I was on Flickr and I was asking Beck. She's got so many, she's got tons of dolls. Tons, like she's got like a whole like, tons. And I'm looking, I was looking at a body and it was in tan skin and I liked the sculpting of the body and I asked her if the, the Dia sculpt, referring exactly to this doll, <laughs> if it would work as a hybrid because I was getting to that point where I'm like, okay, if I see the head, I'm just gonna buy it and figure out a body later. 
which is exactly what I did with some another doll that I, we need to talk about. She tells me, no, this, this hybrid won't really work, but you're still looking for a Dia? And I'm like, girl, yes. Like, I have been looking for a Dia forever. <laughs> and so she messages me and she offers him to me for a decent price for the full doll. And I jumped on it, absolutely jumped on it. And then things happened and I couldn't purchase as soon as I wanted to. And it was just a fucking setback. Um, but she sent him to me. She said, you know what? Would you like me to send him now? And then you could just pay on him. And I was like, oh my God. I mean, that would be that would be great as long as you're comfortable with it. And she made me feel very comfortable. And she made sure that I knew that she was comfortable with that because I did. I do not want to take advantage of anyone. Um, and it was just that's such a huge fucking compliment to me. And she's always been so sweet to me. And we've we've um, we've spoken to each other before. And she was Beck. I don't know if Beck knows this, but she's actually the very first person that ever commissioned me and paid me. I had practice, but I never gotten paid. She was the very first, the very, very first. And I still remember painting her, her tawner, her prints. And I remember painting her Monster High, the 18 inch Claudine. Yeah, very first. But she offered him to me and she was, ugh. I'm rambling at this point, but I just want her, if she watches this to know Thank you, and this means so much to me. So much to me. Oh, he's so handsome. Look at that scowl. Like, he looks like he wants to, like, kiss you, but then punch you in the jaw afterwards. Oh, so good. Speaking of punching people in the jaw, that's a terrible segue. That is a terrible segue. I cannot believe I just said that. Yeah. She is a you know a zero. Another doll that I got because of a friend, but this is the corset that I made. Sorry for her, you know, satellite nippies, but this is a corset that I made. I wanted to do under the bust because fuck all that darting above the bust because she's got big old tatas, so, you know. I completely hand stitched this. Isn't that gorgeous for some hand stitching? First of all, I love hand stitching, hand sewing. It's the shit actually. Um, to me, I know most people hate that shit, but I like it. It makes me happy. Um, not to mention my back stitching, honey, God himself cannot get through my back stitching. That shit is so cure. So this is one of the challenges that we had to make a corset. And this was just my interpretation of that challenge. And lots and lots of best friend lace. All of the lace on here comes from my friend Summer and I still got more. Yeah, I is probably really pissed because um, Virgil has stolen her wig. She's not happy about that. She's really not. Like, she like Virgil girl, I'm gonna need you to fucking not. I need my hair back. Doll people have been, lots of you have been very kind to me, very kind to me. And I've said it time and time again, and it never gets old. I'm not expecting that shit. And I never expect people to overextend themselves to be so kind to me, like many of you have. And I never expect people to go out of their way to be kind to me. I'm not saying that I expect shit from people, but what I'm saying is I'm not one of those people that feel like I'm entitled to people constantly being nice to me. I'm aware that sometimes people just don't care. People have bad days. Sometimes people aren't thinking about you. The world isn't about you. That's where that's coming from, from me. It means a lot to have people go out of their way to be nice to me and have people be so generous and so kind. And I just miss hanging out with people. 
I miss all of you. Like, I miss Anika. I miss Marty. I miss Alexa. I miss Teresa. I miss Kyle. Kyle, girl! That's, I can't remember her name or her mother's name, but we meet at the doll shows all of the time in Jersey. I've done face up work for you and you actually own Applejack now. I can't remember your name, love, but I miss, I miss both of y'all. I miss your mama and I miss you and I miss them pretty ass reborns. Like I miss my doll peeps, you know what I mean? Like, and I miss my best man, Mikey. And I miss being able to go to Applebee's and eat ribs and spend too much money on watered down liquor. Like I miss that shit. Terrible drinks, terrible drinks. They never make them strong enough. Anyway, like I just miss my social life. I miss that shit a lot. And this doll also kind of like reminds me of that because the woman that offered her to me was also another Flickr friend that I've known for a while. This is a doll herself that I was introduced to the you know a zero and the you know a world all those years ago so shit like that that's you those are connections and relationships and stuff that I've come to love through the BJD hobby or through the doll hobby in general and it's just it's stuff like that that I'm missing. I'm missing it a lot because it's people are reaching out and I'm watching people enjoy their hobby in a very healthy way that we haven't seen in the BJD hobby for years because so many people are terrible shit people to each other and you can't enjoy anything because everybody's just, you know, a shit show. But here recently because people are home and they have nothing to do except be home they're enjoying their dolls they're playing with them they're they're reinventing them they're repainting them they're writing stories they're doing all those projects that they never have time for because work and life they're doing it and it's amazing like people really like coming through like on my feed on instagram i'm getting life which i really love but i also really miss people <laughs> and i think that's it i mean that's enough rambling right it's enough rambling this is a long video um virgil and i we're gonna go i would like to draft him another pattern before I try and get out to Target to do some essential shopping. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Virgil, say bye. Say bye to the people. Bye. Would you have a deep voice, Virgil?